Thanks. Your what's up, pub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter, and Instagram followers. It's your boy No Name back at it with another Giants update video. And for this one, it's one I've been wanting to do for a while now. Just a general recap of the 2019 free agency. Uh, the second off offseason with the Dave Gellman regime, Dave Gellman and Pat Sherman, the general new-ish front office that we got since we uh, basically started this rebuild of stores, retooling of the team. Um, I'm going to start off with a couple players that we released, um, mostly the major ones that we released or traded for whatever reasons, and then go into like an overview of all of our signings. In general, I think it was a good offseason. Not a bad one, not a great one. There was a couple things that left to be desired and whatnot, but it was a good offseason. You could see the direction that the team is heading in. You could see what type of players they wanted to get, what type of locker room they want to have. They really want to have like hard-nosed football and whatnot. You, you, the plan is there. You could see the layout, sort of like a roadmap rather than seeing the physical thing itself. So let's start off obviously with the big elephants in the room. First, you know, big elephant, like I said, we let Landon Collins walk in free agency. Basically, every single Giants fan, including myself, thought that the plan was we're going to franchise tag him and re-sign him next year. We just needed to franchise tag him so we could probably go out and get a big name in free agency. That's what everybody thought the plan was. Turns out in the end that he didn't want to be franchise tagged. There were some stories coming out with that first. And then he went and signed that absolutely massive deal with the Redskins, which I definitely think they are overpaying for Collins. He's, excuse me, guys, he's a great safety but his covering skills leave something to be desired which is why i would not give him that money and in general i wouldn't give a safety that money 84 million dollars or something like that whatever it was i just know it was overpaying so that's one reason um which came out after the fact to what i said um if he was asking for that much money from the giants front office then don't really have a problem with letting him go another reason being that there were reports coming out that he wasn't exactly the best leader in the locker room he um either complained about a lot of stuff or talked down to a lot of players and whatnot i mean we've seen him openly call back when eli apple was on the team of cancer and whether or not it was true whether or not that was true uh you could argue that he should not have said that to the media and whatnot so you know cleaning up the locker room as dave gettleman has been doing that was the first major one and the second major one was we traded olivier vernon to the browns for kevin zeitler and I thought that this was a extremely fair trade while we did weaken our pass rush a bit more. Vernon is the best at his of his abilities when he's a number two, and that's gonna show in Cleveland with Miles Garrett as the number one and Vernon as two. You're gonna see Vernon with a good amount of sacks and pressures because they're gonna be trying to block they're gonna be trying to block uh, Garrett over there in Cleveland. So Vernon's numbers will definitely take a spike up and there's some people that's gonna say, Oh, the Giants made a mistake, but others who know how he works will say we expected this and obviously we traded for Kevin Zeitler who was one of the best guards definitely a top five guard in the entire NFL to solidify that right side of the line first step of finalizing and finishing the process on the offensive line which I would like to applaud Dave Gellman for over these past two years the process has been long and grueling and frankly just like a hell of a process frankly just not anything enjoyable at all but it's come a long way you know, I will mention it later, but you know, with the signing of Mike Remmers and drafting of George Asafo, OJ and whatnot, the offensive line as of this point on paper has been fixed in my opinion. It's just now everything that needs to happen right is no injuries and I think the offensive line will be fine. But he made a great move and I will always support trading Burden. And then of course the next big one was trading Odell Beckham Jr. to the Browns for Jabil Preppers, the number 17th overall pick and the number 95 overall pick, which um, at the time I did not think was fair. I thought we deserved more, but after looking over it, and you could ask any Giants fans now, a lot of them have calmed down about the situation and whatnot. They're, you know, they're not in their emotions, they're not in their, in their feelings about it, and they're like, hindsight is 2020. It was probably a free trade. Um, it's very arguable until this season comes out, until we see how our draft picks play out, until we see how Drill Preppers fits in the system. And until we see how Odell performs in Cleveland, but 
I think it was a pretty fair trade. And of course, a lot of people say that the Vernon and Odell trade was really one thing. And if what we got out of it was a better offensive line, um, with the number 17 pick, a new nose tackle who could actually get pressure, and a very young one and that cheap one, uh, and with the 95 overall pick, maybe a future uh, Giants, like we definitely got pass rush out of it. I was trying to say like a future Giants legend. Anything is possible with these rookies, but definitely some help on the pass rush. Then I think, um, and a good safety in Jabril Peppers, who's really good and he has a long way to go in his career. I think this would be one case where I pick quantity over quality because I don't think the quality of our offense is going to decrease at all. In fact, with the help on the offensive line now, it's going to increase. So I, I think it was a fair trade. And then um, that's really in terms of people, that, the major people that we let go. In terms of those that we signed, there was Golden Tate, who a lot of people will look at, oh, he's a replacement for Odell. He's not the replacement for Odell. He's a completely different receiver, and you should not expect Odell numbers from him because the offensive, the passing scheme now is going to be spreading the ball to everybody. We have two really good uh, yards after catch receivers in Stolen Shepard and Golden Tate. Golden Tate, who's probably the master of yards after catch, and just a set of receivers that's good at possession catches in general. With the fixed offensive line now including Mike Remmers and this is gonna the fixed offensive line is gonna give Eli more time in the pocket and it's gonna give Saquon better blocking. He won't have to jump, cut and speed past people in the backfield now because there's gonna be better blocking there. I mean this offense is only gonna go up from what it was last year and in the second half of last year it was a great offense, one that could move the ball and can handle time management well. Um, you know, just adding Golden Tate to that improves it. We re-signed a couple guys like Russell Shepard, Corey Coleman, who was a favorite, and Cody Latimer, who we never got to see a chance of because he's just, he always has the injury bug. A boat, John Jalapio and Spencer Pilly, which goes to the offensive line, I think, I personally think it's fixed. And that center position, I think we have two really good centers, both really good guys from what we hear in the locker room and on the field, if they could, you know, just stay healthy and keep it, you know, good on the field. There's no problems there, and a really good fullback or a underrated fullback in Elijah Penny, who can improve in his blocking and whatnot. But honestly, the fullback position is kind of dead, so you know, take it with a grain of salt. So on the offensive end, in terms of this uh, offseason period, we see that they're moving more towards a spread the ball type of passing, and definitely they're going to be leaning on the the running game heavily because we also signed Rod Smith and a couple of guys that were unrestricted free agents, and I mean um undrafted rookie <laughs> I get the uh, acronyms mixed up but a couple undrafted rookies who could um, make the team Jonathan Hillman being one of them uh, to improve that running game and give Saquon some help much needed help in my opinion now when you go over towards the defensive side I think um, they focused heavily on veterans and guys that could teach the young the young players that we have we definitely went uh, heavy with secondary in the draft we picked up DeAndre Baker who was arguably one of the top three defensive backs out of this draft class. We got Julian Love, somebody who was arguably top five. And and Corey Ballantyne, who um, is from a Division II school, but maybe can prove a lot of people wrong. Definitely a hard worker on special teams and whatnot. We kept uh, Janoris Jenkins, who is, he says he's now in a type of a leader role that he's never been in before in terms of teaching these new guys. And I have a lot of faith in them. I have a lot of faith in our secondary. It was one of our biggest problems on the defense. The defense, of course, in general being a, a huge problem last year. We helped out the secondary and we signed a veteran guy, Antoine Bethea, that could help both Drew Bill Preppers and maybe, you know, Michael Thomas and the other guys we have in the safety room and whatnot. Uh, the other big problem with the defense this past year was, of course, pass rush. We drafted O'Shane Zimenez, who is one of my favorites. He's also a, a low-key, like, a fan favorite, but he has a long way to go before he could... Uh, reach the status of somebody of Justin Tuck and O.C. Human Yura and Michael Strahan, guys who came from small schools and surprised everybody with their immense talent and strength. And I hope him and Lorenzo Carter develop to be two future guys that the Giants can rely on as like staple defensive ends and whatnot. To help out with uh, grooming them, I guess you could say, they signed Marcus Golden, who before his injury was a great player for the Arizona Cardinals. According to himself and team doctors, he is back to full health and he says that he's ready to go. He's ready to get back into his prime position. We also got Olsen Pierre, another unrestricted free agent from the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, in terms of him, what I can say is 
veteran experience is what he would bring to the locker room mostly. Once again, like I said, trying to groom these uh, these young guys. Same thing for our defensive tackle position. We have a lot of defensive tackles, a lot of guys that need development. BJ Hill, my absolute favorite defensive tackle, came out and surprised everybody last year. I think he was a third or fourth round pick, I'm not sure. But um, he went to school with Bradley Chubb and whatnot, and a lot of people say Bradley Chubb got him drafted, but BJ Hill got himself drafted. Came in, had five or six sacks, which is a Giants rookie record. And he definitely just goes anywhere but up from here. Defensive tackle that plays defensive end in the 3-4 system. But, you know, we got a couple guys that could help him develop. John Jenkins. We still got Dalvin Tomlinson. And I think there's another tackle we might have signed. Just scrolling down the list here real quick. Uh, no, I think that's it, yeah. But um, in general, we have guys there. We drafted uh, Darius Slayton also. I think that's on the offensive end. Another wide receiver, good wide receiver group. But there's a Slayton we drafted out of Syracuse. He was our very last pick. Um, Not sure if he's going to even make the 53-man roster, but the defensive attack position in general has a lot of potential. The only group we didn't really touch upon was uh, linebackers. It's relatively the same. I mean... I don't want to say we had a bad linebacking group last year. It's just that they were they were good in the running game, not so good in the passing game. I, I'm t I was tired of seeing our linebackers being burnt by tight ends and running backs last year, but maybe that's something they think they could improve in-house or something that they think they could wait until next offseason. This year is really going to be a year to see where the team is at this point with our draft picks and whatnot, and whatever big team needs are, we're going to fill it with the generous cap space that we have next year almost 120 million dollars to sign players next year whether they're going to be role players or big superstars i think we're going to have a good year this year you already noticed from my channel and from my sales prediction and right now i'm really high on the giants i really think we could get like nine and seven or ten and six and sneak into the playoffs but in general this free agency period this offseason showed that the front office are going for spread the ball running type of offense and a hard-nosed defense that's really going to focus in the trenches with people in the backfield that could catch you slacking. And what they think of this year is it's just a testing year. Test the waters, see what we need to improve for next offseason, and then next year go in and complete, compete in the playoffs, possibly for a Super Bowl championship. Let me know what you guys think. Like I said, I think it was a good offseason for Dave Gellman and the gang. Um, if I was to put a grade on it, I guess I'd give it like a solid B. Uh, I think we're headed in the right direction. I have a lot of faith in this team. I have a lot of faith in the front office. Let me know what you all think down in the comments below. Like, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. A lot of you are saying that you don't get notifications when I upload videos. Just hit the notification bell, and then you'll get a notification. Just the way YouTube works now. I'm out. You're...